So, when this becomes a form of the wave function, I now have to uh, tell you that these determinants are fixed in CI. I am not changing the orbitals. The orbitals are defined. So, what are my parameters here? The parameters are these coefficients C naught, C A R, C A B R S, etc., which have to be determined. Okay? So, these are the de determined and these determinations of the coefficients. So, this is important to note in full CI that this determination of these coefficients are done by variational means, variational method. Quite clearly, if you look at the nature of the variation, this is basically nothing but the linear variation because I am only I am only getting the linear, the coefficients are only linear. So, this is called linear variation because these coefficients are only linear in nature and we actually did a linear variation problem that if I expand a wave function as a, as a linear combination of a basis, these are now my basis, these are my basis for the n electrons. Then you have a McDonald theorem, you, I hope you remember the McDonald theorem that you said not only ground state but all excited states you have an upper bound okay and if i increase the basis results keep on improving but it never goes beyond the, the lower states i hope you remember the mcdonald theorem okay so all that will actually apply here okay so the basis for the entire wave function if you look at the basis now what is the basis for the n electron function we are talking of a one electron basis but the basis for n electron wave function is now the set of determinants. So, you have psi Hartwiffa, then the set psi AR and so on, psi ABRS and so on, all determinants, right. So, all of them together is my set, basis set for this expansion. So, please note, there is a basis set for orbitals, which are one electron function. From this basis, we are forming n electron determinants. How many n electron determinants are there? MCN. If I have a m one electron function, those MCN determinants now become the basis for the n electron problem. Just as one electron basis is the basis for an one electron problem. We always expand a single electron function in a basis, but now these determinants form the basis. So, this determinant MCN determinants are now the basis. my basis for the n electron wave function. So, that is important to note that now if we apply linear variation, remember when we said linear variation, we said exact wave function is a linear combination of a known set of functions which are basis. So, what are these known set of functions? This determinant. So, do not get confused with this one electron basis and the basis for the n electron problem. This basis is of course obtained from this n electron, one electron functions. But the determinants are the basis for the n electron problem, spin orbitals are the basis for the one electron problem, okay. Because obviously for n electron problem, the basis must also contain n electrons, it cannot be one electron, right. So, this the determinants have n electrons, each of them. So, they become the basis for this expansion. So, in that sense, this is a, this problem is exactly identical to the linear variation problem. So, they are my basis. And this wave function is a linear combination of this basis, now n electron basis, and these coefficients, if I obtain by variation principle, it becomes a linear variation. So, psi Hartree-Fock is 1, then you have singly excited, that is m times m minus n times n plus doubly excited, you have m minus c2 plus into n c2 and so on, up to m minus n c n into n c n which is 1 and this number is m c n. So, I had given this identity once, you probably have forgotten, but long back I had already told this identity. So, if you do this, remember these are m minus n. 
So, if I do this basically sum over, so there is a simpler arithmetic sum over m minus n c r n c r r equal to 0 to n is equal to m c n. So, that is that sorry that is the mathematical representation of this. So, your first r equal to 0 is Hartree-Fock 1 into 1 then the singly excited on r equal to 1 ok. So, r contains your degree of excitations. So, Hartree-Fock means no excitations. So, a, what is m minus n c 0 1 right what is n c 0 1. So, that is your 1 when r becomes 1 you have m minus c 1 into n c 1. So, that is your number of singly excited returns and so on till r equal to n. So, when r equal to n you have number of n tuply excited returns which is again n c n is 1, but m minus n c n is your total number. There are how many ways I can excite n to m minus n. All this sum together is actually m c n. So, that is the breakup uh, that you actually see. So, basically all the m c n determinants have been categorized with a reference determinant Hartree Fock as singly excited, doubly excited, etc. Okay. So, we are when whenever we talk now of a benchmark calculation, please remember that the benchmark calculations are in a finite basis. So, do not immediately jump into experiment because experiment is little bit more different. You have, you have first of all you have a large basis then experiments have other effects like relativistic effects etc. that has to be taken care. But as far as theory is concerned, it is an exact theory in that basis ok. So, this can be a benchmark for other theories. The second point to note <coughs> is that although I had said Brillouin's theorem, please remember the Brillouin's theorem that psi Hartree Fock Hamiltonian psi A r is 0 and because of this we showed this is my Brillouin's theorem that this results to the fact that the MP2 energy does not contain does not contain any singly excited return or contribution with energy cannot be determinant. I should write does not contain contributions from any psi a r ok. Simply because my MP2 form had a Hartree Fock Hamiltonian excited determinant that is all that form is. However, when I am writing C i note that my exact wave function will contain singly excited determinant. There is no reason right now to eliminate that. Brillouin's theorem simply says this ok. Brillouin's theorem does not say that the wave function will not contain singly excited determinant. It only says that the matrix element is 0 and because of the fact and I again repeat because of the fact that the MP2 energy or correlation energy MP2 correlation energy is sum over psi Hartree Fock V psi excited or psi whatever determinant psi star let me call it mod square ok divided by the denominator which is the difference of these two ok all, all star all excited determinant. Because of this reason the psi star cannot be singly excited because of Brillouin's theorem because essentially h is same you can replace this h by v also it does not matter as I told you h not anyway it is 0. So, that is the reason MP2 energy does not contain, but because MP2 energy does not contain and there is a Brillouin's theorem. I cannot jump into a conclusion that the psi 0 will not contain that we will see when I actually solve the Hartree Fock equation ACI equation. So, as of now of course, my wave function must contain the singly excited term. The only thing you can argue is that because your first order wave function does not have singly excited contribution, you can argue that even in the exact wave function the contribution of the singly excited determinant will be made small most likely it is likely to be small. What do you contribution means? The value of C A R is likely to be small. Of course, the determinant is fixed ok. The value of the coefficient is likely to be small that is something that I can argue because I know that the MP2 energy is a very good cut for the correlation energy and there there is no singly excited determinant. So, most likely when I do a C i the contribution of the singly excited determinant will be also less but it need not be 0. So, that is something that I want to mention that do not confuse this with Brillouin's theorem. <coughs> Brillouin's theorem simply says that the Hamiltonian matrix element is 0 
uh, and we will see how that affects when you actually do, uh, write down the CI equations, okay. In fact, we had written down the CI equation for linear variation problem. If you remember linear variation, we wrote down the equation that it is a matrix of the Hamiltonian. You have to construct the Hamiltonian matrix in the basis and diagonalize. Now, the same thing we will do, my basis is only this determinants because my Hamiltonian is an electron problem, basis is determinants. But what I will do, I will not assume that, I will rederive the coefficients in a systematic manner. So, what we essentially will do is first do a variation problem and then try to see what these coefficients are, okay. So, there is a very important theorem. That is, if I have, and this is something I mentioned, I think, if I have a web function as a linear combination of some basis, let us say phi of i, which is a basis, this basis is a very generic term here. It can be a one electron problem, it can be an n electron problem. If it is one electron problem, these are orbitals. If it is n electron problem, they are determinants, okay. But whatever is the basis, the, the coefficients obtained variation, this is a very important theorem obtained variationally are the same as obtained by what I call and I had defined this before by a method of projection onto the Schrodinger equations. So, this is a very important theorem and if you recall when we did the, when we did the uh, linear variation solution, we actually used this theorem. We did not actually variationally obtain coefficients. I do not know if you remember this and before I go to CI, I may again remind you what we did. So, let us say my psi is sum over i ci phi i. So, what we did is the following and this is, this will actually tell you what is the method of projection. So, we write the Schrodinger equation C i phi i. So, a psi equal to e times C i phi i. Remember, this is what we did. We just wrote the, the Schrodinger equation a psi equal to e psi, applied psi here. We are going to do that for C i later in the next class, but let me just quickly revise you what we have done before. Phi i's are my basis. So, what are these phi i's in C i? These phi i's will be psi Hartree-Fock, psi a r, psi a b r s and so on. But right now, they are just basis. So, then what we did was to first project this with a member of the function. So, let us say any phi j. I hope you remember this phi i c i sum over i. So, i will now go outside. So, the same thing will happen here e sum over i phi j phi i c i. So, what I have done is the following I have multiplied this Schrodinger equation, very one line multiplication by a given phi j star, which is a member of the basis, for all j I am doing it, by one member of the basis and integrate. I think we have done this many times. This is the matrix formulation of quantum mechanics. Ruthan equation also we did the same thing. Then we say that this is now the matrix elements of the Hamiltonian in this basis. So, I call it matrix of H. So, we wrote this as sum over I, call this H j I this is ci equal to e since this is orthogonal this is delta ij sum over j sum over i so it becomes cj correct the right hand side simply becomes e times cj this i vanishes sum over i vanishes and this is my eigen value equation in fact if you remember this is my matrix eigen value equation and this gives me the coefficients by method of projection what what I am, I am showing an important theorem, we will prove it that had I done completely variational, what would be variational calculation? That is do actually psi h psi, correct, by psi psi and then we minimize this with respect to the coefficients, then the result that I would have got is exactly same as this. This is easier to derive, this is more complicated because you have a numerator, you have a denominator, and then you have to do delta, the first derivative to be 0, it is much more complicated. This is much simpler to derive. So, this is an important theorem 
we have assumed last time that this theorem is true and we have only done this part ok. I want to first now convince you that doing this and doing actual variation gives the same result before I go ahead because when I will go ahead I am not going to use this variation because it is very complicated I am going to simply use method of projection. I hope you understand the two, two difference one is that you get an expectation value then minimize this quantity with respect to coefficients minimization which means first derivative equals 0 and so on. Here I am not doing anything like this I am simply writing whatever is there in the Schrodinger equation and multiplying by a member of the basis star conjugate of that and integrating and lo and behold I get an equation which is a matrix equation and I call this same as this. Now note that the important theorem holds only for linear variation this is very important. So do not do this for any other wave function if the wave function form is a linear form like here then only this theorem holds good. Otherwise actual variation would mean doing this, this is truly variation ok. But I can say for linear variation that these two are identical. So I will first show this in the next class before I actually derive the CI equation by method of projection. Please remember this method is called method of projection, it is a very important method in quantum chemistry, very, very simple method write the Schrodinger equation whatever you have got just project it by member of the basis and you will immediately get an equation and what, what the theorem says that if it is a linear variation then these equations are identical to what you will get by actual variation. You have any problem with the equation? No, okay. So I am just writing phi j star, phi j, h, phi i, ci I have taken outside. This becomes my matrix element, h, j, i. It is now a matrix in a basis, finite basis and then you diagonalize. So that is how I get the energies. Of course, you will have m roots and there will be m column vectors. So it will become a matrix and all that, all that technology is there. And that is coefficient matrices. If I put them in a matrix, that is a unitary matrix, all that you know because it is a Hermitian matrix, finally h. So it is, I, I have discussed this matrix eigenvalue problem. So all that will apply. But important thing is to first show this because somebody will say this is not variation. So why I am going to apply variation results, linear variation results. McDonald's theorem is for variation. So first I will show that this is identical to this. Then I am going to derive the CI equation using a method of projection. There I will explicitly write the basis functions as Hartree-Fock, psi AR and then I will apply Brillouin's theorem and a lot of things will come up after that. 